Good day everybody! So I'm so excited but also extremely nervous to show you guys this knife and to do a review on this thing. This is an incredible knife and if you've seen the thumbnail, if you've seen the photo that I posted about this knife, you know that it is in a class of its own and uh, <laughs> I'm excited because I've been wanting this knife for a long time but also I'm nervous because I don't know if I can do this knife justice uh, in this review. You know, this is something that you sort of have to see in real life to really appreciate it in full. But I'm going to try my best and show you this knife. I think it's really amazing. Um, there are some things I like, some things that I wouldn't say I don't like, but some things that I, I might enhance a little bit. But this thing is just spectacular. So I'm going to put up two photos. Right, so now that you guys just have an idea of these two creatures, it is a Peridactyl and it is a Velociraptor. And the knife design is based on those two um, dinosaur creatures, you know, prehistoric creatures. So, if they were to have a baby, introducing the Pickled Steel Raptor, that is what you would get, okay? <laughs> so it's awesome. Uh, I think just in a closed, a closed position, you kind of get the idea of that prehistoric creature just eyeing you out from behind a rock or a bush or something and uh yeah it's very cool it's very cool it's just like this stealth mode sort of thing looking at you you don't really know what to expect and then wha bam there you go and so you can see the eye the cutout for the 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 thumb hole um represents the eye of the velociraptor and then the blade shape represents the the beak of the pterodactyl um so yeah also the snout uh, sort of represents the beak of the pterodactyl very cool design i love it and it just kind of adds to to what they've been busy with also with the toko that prehistoric theme very awesome now first off this knife was designed to be both beautiful and practical and that will not be the last time i am going to say that <laughs> but it it is designed to to have those beautiful features in the design and to actually represent something and then also to have those features um be practical you know it's not just a, a novelty piece the, each thing that they did in the design has a practical aspect to it so let's just talk about this knife i'm not going to ramble a lot in this video but let's talk about this knife so the overall length of this knife is i'm just going to get this cloth so the overall length of this knife is around 19.8 um, centimeters that's exactly what the length is so compared to for instance the toko um, the toker is about three millimeters shorter, a large honey badger. The handles of, of both are pretty equal. They are actually exactly equal. So if you get a good grip on a large honey badger like me, then this is a good knife for you. It will be very uh, ergonomic. But you do have a uh, little bit more of a blade on the honey badger, but then you have more of a cutting edge on the raptor. Okay. So then blade length is eight centimeters or 80 millimeters. The blade width is two and a half 2.6 centimeters so that's that's awesome i'm um, getting a nice nice big blade and then the blade thickness is two and a half centimeters no no two and a half millimeters <laughs> don't know why i would say that two and a half millimeters so pretty standard blade stock thickness for most knives i think is, is two and a half um this knife wasn't designed to to be a hard worker or an outdoor knife like uh, the call is is three millimeters so you do have a a substantial uh, blade stock there um, but it will definitely get the job done if you need to use it practically you know um that's that's plenty of blade that's thick enough for sure handle thickness is one and a half centimeters so 15 millimeters and compared to the honey badger large you do have a bigger or thicker handle but then the design is a lot slimmer than the honey badger um just comparison so in your pocket it will take up less space it's a very very unique very slim design i love it okay now let's just you guys have seen those liners <laughs> those are not baby liners those are proper solid stainless steel polished liners which is amazing okay but they are not skeletonized and for that reason and not just that reason this knife is a little bit on the heavier side um so yeah so if we take for instance the coal the coal comes in at 120 grams okay now 
as I mentioned in that video, if you haven't seen that video, this is my EDC knife and it is awesome. So please check out that video. But I did mention that it's slightly heavier than maybe your average EDC knife. But the trade up is a more solid knife. Um, and for 20 grams, I'm really not going to complain. Now this one is 146 grams. So it is a heavy knife. There's no doubt about that. It comes in at, at 26 grams heavier than the Akal. But guys, remember that this is not meant and designed to be an EDC. You can definitely carry it that way if you wish. But this is a showpiece. This is a fancy dress knife. This is a, a conversation starter knife. This is a, the one you take to a fancy event, to a wedding or whatever. And, um, and something that you, when you do not carry this, you will display it on a display case. And as I mentioned uh, to you guys, I do... That is my intention. That is what I wanted to do. And <laughs> I've been wanting this knife. Uh, when I showed you guys the Toko and the Divine, I mentioned that I want to get a display stand and then display the Divine and then the Toko and then the Raptor as sort of the the top piece, the, the beast, you know, in the collection. And I'm still, I now have the Raptor, so now I can do that. You know? <laughs> so this is something that will be displayed uh, in, in my situation. It will be displayed until it gets carried to a worthy event. Um, for for this knife okay now with regards to the weight and the whole edc sort of vibe you do get this um custom lever sheath as with all the other uh other damascus knives and it does fit in this sheath very nicely as i mentioned with the toko and the divine you know use your lanyard or put it bolstered down so that you can get this knife out easily because it is a snug fit so um which is great and which is what you would prefer because uh, then it doesn't shake around and all of that but um, yeah for to easily take it out you will need to put it bolstered down or use the lanyard to take it out quickly okay now i have i've seen that you know some guys they, they really prefer pocket clips this knife does not have a pocket clip but this is something i just want to talk about real quick because you need to see and review the knife and acknowledge the knife in the in the within its purpose within its it's it's the designed function um yeah now if they were to put a pocket clip on this knife i don't have a a design uh damascus knife from pickled steel with a pocket clip there are some out there um the darmadillo there are a few out there with pocket clips okay and if that is your thing then that is your thing but this is not something that i'm going to throw in my pocket with my change because i have so much crap in my pocket i always have some orcs tools and bits and change and other knives and my phone and my keys and yeah man i can't think that someone will, <laughs> will put this knife in their pocket with all those things you know maybe you, you want to do that then do that but for me i appreciate the fact that there is no pocket clip on this knife right um or for that matter also the divine and the toko because once those holes are in there you can't get rid of them right uh, it's not going to look the same for you as a user if you buy this knife you know it doesn't have a pocket clip you can put a pocket clip on yourself or you can carry it around the way the um, company designed it to be carried and you don't need to carry it around in this leather sheath i do understand that some people have a very tactical look some people are security police that sort of thing and you really can't rock up with <laughs> with this on your belt you know you are going to need something more tactical to carry your knives in um but then get yourself a sheath that fits you know um <laughs> uh, yeah i'm pretty sure that maybe uh, they will give you a slight discount if you say hey leave the sheath just give me the knife um, and then maybe you can use that money to buy yourself another sheath i'm not sure i'm just speaking in the air but uh, yeah okay so guys let's talk about the blade the blade on this thing is what attracted me to this knife right um Obviously, Damascus, 67 layers of 9CR Damascus. So that is awesome. I really like the pattern. It's great. The etching is fantastic. And um, yeah, blade shape. It sort of has a reverse tanto blade shape, but it's not traditional reverse tanto. It's sort of modified. Because yeah, and it's going to be difficult for you guys to see this, but this is not straight. Okay, this sort of has a, a little bit of a bend inwards and then it creates the first tip of the tanto and then it sort of has a slight belly um, going up to the second tip which i think is very functional 
in my opinion. You know, if you're going to use this knife for carving, <laughs> which I'm not, but if you're going to use this knife for carving, then that will be very functional. You know, you have an a inwards uh, edge and then a, a little bit of a belly outwards uh, between the two tips. Also have the snout, I'm calling it the snout, but that does create an option to really creep up on this blade, especially with that forward finger choil there. So I can really get up on this knife. Good grip, yeah, awesome stuff. Does have some jumping there, which is, it's not too aggressive, but it's also not um, something that you're just gonna roll over, okay? It's, it's, it's effective. It's really, it really is practical. It really is very effective. Um, so good finish overall on this blade. I like that it's somehow, you know, it has this sort of a, a clean look and then it has the Damascus edging and then there's a little bit of a, a spot where it sort of just fades away slightly, um, which adds to that whole uh, raptor sort of prehistoric creature vibe. And then once it gets over the uh, the grind, then it uh, it has this very, very prominent um, uh, Damascus edging once again. So I like, I like that diversity, those different layers, those different effects. Let's talk about the action. So you do have a very functional flipper tab. It does not have jumping, but that I've never had a misfire or missed that tab. Um, very effective. I do like that they didn't put jumping here because that would have freed my fingers. Um, yes, let's uh, let's talk about the thumb hole. So the thumb hole, you know, uh, the thumb hole, you really see that eye. It's beautiful, but it's also practical. I can reverse flick this knife uh, very easily. So yeah, just trying to do it under the under the camera is a bit of a hassle. <laughs> but yeah, you can thumb flick this, you can reverse flick this, and maybe it's it's a it is quite a small hole, but you do get this added um, cut out here, which uh, grabs your finger quite nicely. So that's awesome. Uh, I think the action is fantastic, I really do, especially on Damascus. As I mentioned before, you know, when I roll out this knife, I can really feel those bearings run over the different layers. So to achieve an action of, of this quality on a Damascus blade with all that resistance, that's impressive, guys. It really, that's impressive, okay? You have a complete Damascus blade. It's not like it stops there, okay? So very nice, very nice action on this Damascus blade. Well done, we could steal for that. Then we have an awesome little pivot collar. It's blue, I like it. We have this bolster, which the website does mention that it is Damascus. Um, it doesn't have an etching, so yeah, uh, but it, it really fits the, the color of the, the blade. And I think it looks great, okay? I think it, it really looks great. It's not a polished stainless steel, so my fingerprints are not left behind there. It doesn't smudge at all. It looks awesome. Um, yeah, then we have some incredible ebony wood scales. If you like me, this was a big attraction. Ebony wood is fantastic. It's so beautiful. It's so nice. Um, I have oiled it a little bit because I've been sitting on this knife for a while. But uh, yes, that is just next level. Beautiful. I like that the bolster, it doesn't kind of square off there. You know, it, it, it creeps into the, into the wooden handle with that little shape there. So it kind of rounds into the handle, becomes part of the, um, the stock of the, of the handle. And that's very cool. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. It is, uh, if I am correct, T6 hardware and then t8 pivot so you get that and then you do have some awesome liners the liners are stainless steel and polished and not skeletonized very solid knife awesome backspacer um, stainless steel backspacer if i'm correct but you do have the awesome cutouts there and it is rounded so it's not harsh on the hand there's no rough edges here at all it is extremely ergonomical um very nice fitting hand it's snuck in your hand Yes, you have a fantastic grip. And as I mentioned, I did say that the Halo is one of the most comfortable knives that I've, I've held. Um, but for the Damascus knives, it's going to be tough to beat the Raptor. Um, that is extremely comfortable. So nice. I like the cutouts, the rounding. It makes for a very, very snug, very comfortable grip in hand. Fantastic. Fantastic, guys. Let's talk about this lanyard though for a moment. So if we were to take, for instance, the Honey Badger, you guys can see the lanyard tool is not sunken it is um, right up as part of the of the handle itself and with that you're kind of getting your lanyard is kind of folding over your handle it, you do feel it there it's it's not in the way but it 
maybe, maybe it doesn't look as great. For instance, if you look at the toko, you have a cutaway and then you have your lander door in the liner and then cut away and then the um, the handle uh, the wooden handle starts again so that's i like that it looks neat it looks practical it feels good feels a lot better um it looks a lot better it looks uh, you know well rounded and i think that is aw awesome that they did include that within this backspacer right here um to have that sort of a, a lanyard all there. Uh, this knife did come with a leather lanyard like this one, but I did remove it for now. Um, and I will still decide if I'm going to put that back up or if I'm going to put a darker lanyard and a thicker lanyard like this one. But I think for now I'm going to keep it this way. I feel that I can take it out of the sheath comfortably without the lanyard. Um, it's big enough. I, I have a good purchase on this knife. So as you can see, my pinky is not swaying off here but if you do have humongous hands then that is also a little bit of a cutaway that um would fit your pinky so you get a grip with that pinky you don't you don't hang on the edge you actually have a little bit of a a cutaway for that pinky so it's fantastic guys it, it's amazing how they fought this through it it really is um yeah so you get obviously a box with a microfiber cloth like this one you get a awesome leather sheath and i think this is just a fantastic knife i will be using it um, for fancy dress only but maybe you are out there and you want to use this thing every single day i do recommend it. i think it will hold up to any task well basically any task maybe maybe not the toning and stuff like that but any task that was made for a knife <laughs> this thing will do the job Guys, there are so many different options with regards to the Damascus uh, when it comes to the pickled steel lines. Um, so please go check out that in the in the description will be a link. There will also be a link to the Facebook page. These knives often come on auction. There's just been a call on, on auction. There's a Viper on auction. Um, a Darmadillo is now on auction. So there are so many different knives on auction. Um, so you can get them for for maybe a lot cheaper or maybe a little bit more you know <laughs> we don't know but good quality knife i really enjoy this this is going to have and already has a a prime spot in my damascus collection great knife check out the the pickled steel raptor it is awesome it is manly it is tough it is beautiful it is practical it is ergonomic it's an ergonomic machine and uh, very solid it will last you forever Okay guys, thank you for watching this video and uh, I will still be reviewing the Kaya, the Nebula, that's also coming and yeah, maybe still the Plato, uh, which is also a very nice outdoor knife. Um, so still some variety coming, as I mentioned before, I did make this channel just for pickled steel and that is what I focus on doing. This is not to gain subscribers or attention or anything like that, this is just to show you guys what you're getting from the company pickled steel okay because i feel that if you support this company you're supporting yourself um they're making awesome knives at a very budget price good pr price tag uh, the price for this knife is a thousand nine hundred rand on the website so it's it is a bit on the more expensive side of what they do have but it is 9cr damascus it is a beautiful knife good quality knife it is a high-end knife so for that price, you will pay a lot more if you <laughs> if you buy something like this from a different company. Okay, guys, have a great day, and um, remember, no knife, no life.